Echo, how long have you how long have you been vegan, and how long have you been raw vegan, and what were those transitions like? Uh, well, to to kind of give a real fast summary, I started eliminating what I would consider unhealthy foods at the age of sixteen. I just cut out red meat, uh, didn't eat red meat for a couple of years, and I uh, cut out chicken, and fish. Let's say uh, in my early twenties, then. Um, Pretty much every year on January 1st, I would always have a New Year's resolution of cutting out something that I felt that wasn't optimal for me. Uh, so by the time I was 26 or 27, I was pretty much completely vegan, no dairy, uh, no egg products, no eggs. Um, I was just basically eating uh, cooked, uh, cooked vegan diet at the age of 27. And then um, I guess when I was 30, I'm um, 30 almost 33 now, when I was 30, just turned 32, uh, 31, uh, I started up on the 80-10-10 or the low-fat raw vegan diet. So I've been doing, I've been eating only low-fat raw fruits and vegetables for almost two years now. And you told me um, before we started here that you've tried many different diets and variations on diets. Uh, what prompted you to to keep changing your diet, and like, how did you finally come to uh, the raw vegan diet? Well, I, I I've been uh, I've been running competitively since I was a uh, teenage like a teenager, thirteen years old or so, and you know, I, I my quest was always you know how to perform better, uh, how to perform better. Uh, I thought, you know, came down to diet, and then I figured out that it's not just diet, it's not just your training, it's, it's diet, it's training, it's rest. You know, the only way to get better is to abs- do absolutely nothing. The rest is very important, too. So there's a lot of factors. And I also, and one of the things I figured out with lots of trial and error is that body weight or fat composition was really a huge factor in performance. Um, from in a, in a hot environment, you know, if you have higher body fat, you're, you're not going to be able to cool nearly as well as the next guy. I mean, just in, just talking about physics, you, you know, something that weighs less, uses less energy and has less resistance to go faster. So most people think, you know, doing really hard workouts is the only way to get better. I usually don't do a hard workout. I wouldn't do a hard workout until I was down to a certain body weight. So the only way I was able to really get down to what I would consider a very good body weight or low body fat composition, uh, eating my cooked diet was basically to do a calorie restricted diet. And that does make you lose weight. You will lose body fat if you don't eat, if you physically just cut your calories down. Um, and a lot of people have had success on Atkins and I did a, a vegetable protein Atkins diet for a number of months where I just basically drink vegetable protein shakes. Uh, and I lost a lot of body fat. I got really really low body fat composition and I started to run much much faster and I was still eating uh, cooked vegetables the problem was is when I when I figured out that body composition or body weight was such a major factor in performance uh, what, I, what what there's other factors that, that come into play that can work against you if you work out a lot and you and you're not eating enough calories or you're not eating the right foods you're going to start to become deficient in a lot of things, and you're going to put yourself at risk of injury. So when I did the Atkins diet, even though I was vegan Atkins, um, after about three months on that diet, I got to a very low body weight, very low fat weight, running very fast, set new PRs in the marathon by a big margin. Uh, my tibia broke. I had a severe stress fracture. I was basically couldn't run for a year. Mm-hmm. So after that, I kind of gave up on – you know, calorie restrictive diets. Said so the only way to get really light is to just eat less. What I learned about Dr. Uh, Dr. Graham's diet, or it's, just, it's not Dr. Graham's diet, it's it's a low fat raw vegan diet. And plenty of people have come out before Dr. Graham and talked up this diet, this basically natural hygiene diet. Is that with fruits and vegetables, you can pretty much eat as much as you want. You can eat a lot of calories, and you're not going to put on body fat. Uh, not in any type of way that you will with cooked foods. Um, and you also, you don't have the food addictions uh, when you eat with low-fat, raw, vegan diet. When you eat just fruits and vegetables, your taste buds change. There's all these physiological and emotional adaptations that take place. Um, 
you're in control of yourself completely. Uh, you, you have not run into any kind of issues with stress fractures, any type of injuries at all. And I'm not eating a calorie restricted diet ever. On, on the contrary, I eat so much, it's almost freakish. And that's part of the diet. If you're an athlete, you're an elite athlete, you can maintain very low body fat uh, while still eating a tremendous amount of calories and being satisfied um, and maintain a very low body weight or body, com- body fat, fat composition. So now I've set all new PRs well beyond my vegan Atkins diet uh, routine, and I am uh, not injured ever. I haven't been injured. I haven't been sick. I haven't had a cold. I have no mucus. I mean, it's just the, the benefits are just incredibly like long and, and vast, and they just keep getting better and better. I thought I had reached or experienced all the benefits within the first two or three months, but now, you know, after almost two years, I'm new and, and improved. Things are happening to me all the time. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, it's a diet that it, it, it blows me away that this is not mainstream um, in in high elite athletics. That more people aren't doing this, and I think the only reason more people aren't doing this is because people have psychological and emotional food addictions that they cannot give up on. And so that's the major challenge in this diet that people really have to come to terms with. They're going to do it seriously. And what what might the, and what what might the what might those emotional psychological addictions look like and feel like? What are they? Well, I'm going to I'm going to use an example which I would say people might feel is extreme or radical, but. I think some people might be able to really identify with it. So there's somebody who's been experienced or knows a little bit about addiction. Let's, so let's use a familiar addiction, let's say cigarette addiction or alcohol addiction or even something as simple as coffee addiction. People don't realize how insidious addictions are and how much they influence everything they do from day to day. Um, a, there's very few people that casually smoke. There's very few people that casually have coffee. There's very few people that are alcoholics that casually drink. Now, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, when people are addicted to something, they do it often and they do it a lot. And cooked food, most people would say, it's crazy for me to say that cooked food is an addiction, but I really believe that. Um, and look, at, look at the dollar menu in fast food. This food is made to be addictive. It is a profitable business. People stand in line to buy this food. It is not healthy. It's proven to be unhealthy. It's not good for you in any way. It might be cheap today, but you are going to give every penny that you have in your life when you get older to the hospitals and to the doctors when you're sick from eating this food. Same thing happens with the smoking, yet people still do it. It doesn't make any logical sense. That is addiction. Cooked foods are addictive. Even a sweet potato, yes, even a sweet potato, a hot sweet potato has addictive, uh, I would say, characteristics over a fresh orange or um, or any other natural fruit or vegetable. Um, Most people just won't eat a sweet potato. They'll put uh, butter on it or they'll put brown sugar in it or if it's a regular potato, they'll put salt on it, or they'll put seasonings and spices and herbs, and they're chasing stimulation. And that's what people can't give up. Eating, for most people, is not about nutrition. It's about stimulus. And most people, even if they recognize it, as I do, and as I do very well, it's very difficult to give up on it, as it's very difficult to give up on cigarettes or coffee or alcohol, once you have one cigarette or one drink of alcohol or one cup of coffee, it creates a snowball effect. You want to eat more of it, and you can't stop. And recovering alcoholics have a saying, you know, one is, uh, one is, is too many and a thousand is not enough. And it's the same thing with cooked foods. If you don't decide that you are going to eat a natural species-specific diet, which I believe is raw fruits and vegetables, 
and nothing else, no condiments, no salt, no spices, and unless you give it everything you have and you say, I'm not going to cheat, I'm not going to go and have things once in a while, you will never eat this diet and stay on this diet because you can't have – a casual smoker can't just have one cigarette. They, they have a pack a day, and it usually starts out at one or two, three, four, and then they're eating – then they're smoking two packs a day or, or alcoholics don't you know, become you know, binge drinkers overnight when they're in the bar every day. It happens over years. And just look at anybody who's over 50 years old walking down the street. They weren't all fat. They didn't start out that way, but they become that way. They develop that way. You look at anybody who eats a low-fat raw beef and diet, whether they're 15, 20, or 60 years old, they're going to maintain a low body fat composition. Their waist size is going to be the same. Their, their, their emotional state is going to be the same. Everything about them is going to be maintained because the diet – is a natural species specific diet. We were made to eat fruits and vegetables, low fat. And I really get it. And that's why, even though I have emotional and and um, like psychological desires for cooked food or for Thanksgiving dinner or Sunday morning brunch or whatever holiday or you know whatever other season it is or event, whether you go to the baseball game and you want to get Cracker Jacks, you have to let these things go because I know intuitively that they're not going to be good for me. And if I have one, it's not going to be enough. And then I'll be back to where I was on a yo-yo diet, binge eating, and not being healthy. So it's a lifestyle beyond anything else, this type of diet. What sort of... uh strategies or how do you how do you deal with with those those cravings what do you do in your in your mind to to deal with those cravings that's a very good question and when i first started on this diet i was very excited about it because intellectually i knew this was home base i knew that this was absolutely optimal if i could do it so there's lots of ways to get away from being in those positions where you can't resist something or where you have a craving and you can't deal with it. One of the important, very important things to do is to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. If you eat 10 bananas at one time, even after a big workout, uh, your favorite food, let's say it's pizza or cheesecake, is not going to be as appetizing even close to as appetizing as it was before you ate those bananas. If you are physically full, if you are satiated, those, you're not hungry. You won't want to eat those other things. So it's important to physically force yourself to eat a lot of fruits and vegetables because you need to take in as many calories as you can. So eat a lot. Always have food available and ready. So you want to be prepared. So like, just think of it as a race. You know, if you're going, if you, you, you're not going to get on a 100-mile bike ride without fuel or without knowing where you're going to stop to get fuel. It would be suicide. If you don't, you know, want to slip up when you're really giving this diet a hard, a hard, real shot, make sure you've got really high-quality food, really high-quality produce, and you have it available, and you make sure you eat a lot of it. You can't gain weight eating fruits and vegetables if you're working out. It's almost impossible. Most people will lose a tremendous amount of weight in the first three months, no matter how much they're eating, even if you're just eating bananas all day, which some people think are very fattening. So those are the main points. Get really high-quality produce. If you're eating crappy oranges, it's like eating soggy pizza. It's just not good no matter, you know, no matter what it is or how hungry you are. So really high-quality, get a lot of food, and have it prepared. And then, of course, if you, if you know if you go to, out to dinner with friends, and you know it's going to be really hard for you to resist eating something in the restaurant, just don't go out or make sure you eat a ton of food before you go there so you're really full and you're really not interested. Is What, what do I – What are your thoughts on supplements? Oh, supplements, yeah. Well, I, I, before I found Dr. Uh, about the read Dr. Graham's book, I always thought, you know, more is better. More supplements are better. I was one of these people who spent $500 a month at GNC, you know, like vitamin shop. And I would just buy these things, take these pills and these potions and powders. And 
you know, I was like everybody else. I was, I'm embarrassed to say it. I was just looking for, for you know, the, the silver bullet or the, the special pill or, you know, the snake oil. And if, and if it cost $40 for the bottle of pills, it was probably better than the bottle that cost $20. And, I mean, I was just an idiot, just an absolute idiot. I spent God knows how many thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars standing and standing, looking at going through these aisles. And I used to buy all this stuff. My pee would be yellow, green, blue, you know, you name it. I used to buy all this stuff. And I used to think, oh, if I take, you know, coenzyme Q10 and if I, you know, phosphate load and if I, you know, do this and, and if I take that and if I try, you know, the alpha lipoic acid, you know, on my long runs. And, I mean, I tried everything out there, bought every book on the subject. And let me tell you something. For the last two years, I'm taking a pill or a potion or a powder or anything, and I set new PRs across the board in every distance my entire career. And I'm in my, you know, going into my mid-30s where most people say I'm past my prime. Supplements are it's, it's snake oil. It's absolutely a scam. If more was better, if, if, if you can get more, you know, more iron in your blood, if you can get more B12 or you could get more of any supplement in you, then why not? We, why don't we just just eat supplements? Then why should we even eat food? We should just eat powder all day. <laughs> and what's pretty funny is there's, there's a lot of people that just do eat powder all day, and it's pretty ridiculous. Um, what I what I've learned over time and over experiencing for myself is that when you eat cooked food, if you eat let's say rice or pasta, that stuff if you put it in a bowl and you leave it on the oven at 100 degrees for 12 hours, you know what's going to happen to that pasta and that rice, and those grains? It turns into sludge. It turns into, I call it stucco. It's like, you know, if you, if you want to stucco a wall and you're building, building a project, or let's say you dump that bowl of stucco in a drain in a bathtub, and then you try to fill the bath with water. The water's not going to go out of the bath because you've got that stucco coating every, you know, exit or every, every place that the water would normally go down. When you cut out grains, when you cut out all these processed cooked foods, your intestines become like a membrane where things can pass through it, like really pass through it. Like think of a coffee filter. If you don't have that stucco in sealing off every part of your intestine, when you eat a fruit or a vegetable or, or green, tender greens, your body absorbs those nutrients so quickly and so efficiently you don't need any supplements. You know, I'm, I I ran, and I, I used to get scared that oh, I'm going to be cal- I'm going to be deficient in calcium, magnesium, and I'm going to get a bone fracture again eating this way. I got I got a supplement or something. And, you know, I, I, and and, and I'm, I got these things in my head because of all the marketing and all the stuff that we learn and we read about in these magazines. It's all trash. I'm running a hundred miles a week every week. I ran. You know, I'm running. I, I ran. I just. I just really pushed myself. I ran. Just to give you an example, just eating oranges, lots and lots of oranges, eating persimmons in the last few weeks. I ran pretty much. I was. I ran the New York City Marathon in two hours thirty five minutes. The next day felt great. And that's you know the subject we got to talk about is recovery on this diet. Felt great. Went out for a thirty mile run the day after the New York City Marathon. I felt so good. I ran twenty miles the day after that. Then I ran fifteen miles for the next three days. Then the following weekend, just a week after the New York City Marathon, I ran the Harrisburg Marathon in Pennsylvania, and I came in first place, and I ran two hours, 32 minutes. I felt fantastic. I ran the last six miles faster than any, any other miles in the entire race. I crossed the finish line, ran back to meet my wife, who was also running the marathon, ran another five miles, feeling great. I mean, I am not kidding. Stride perfectly intact. No supplements. 31 miles for the day. Do you know the next three days I ran 31 miles? Every day for the next three days after that race, now, not all at once. I usually do doubles. I usually break up my, my runs in the morning and the evening. But I'm fresh. No stress fractures. No supplements. No cooked foods. I'm eating fruits and vegetables. And my membrane, my intestinal walls are crystal clear. I eat an orange, the vitamin C, the, the slight you know, trace of magnesium that's, that's in there, the phosphorus, the folic acid, it goes into me. Because I don't have the stucco in my stomach anymore. And that's what people got to really, really just accept, that cooked food is not meant to go in your body. There's not a single animal on the planet that cooks their food except for humans. And a trillion dollars of investment in medical research, into diet, 
and all of these things, it, it, all the research comes back to say eat more fruits and vegetables and eat them raw because they're better for you. If you want proof that raw fruits and vegetables is the optimal diet, look at all recorded history. Look at every animal species on the planet. They all eat raw fruits and vegetables. They're not overweight. They don't have arthritis. They all perform at the same levels. All cheetahs run about the same speed. All zebras can go about the same distance. They all weigh about the same at, at full adult growth. And these animals all eat the same diet. Look at humans. We're so out of shape. We're so fat. We're disastrous. We're in the hospital. We can't pay. We, we're, we're, we're a wreck. And what do we do that's different than all these other animals, all the other creatures, creatures on the planet? We just eat cooked food. You gotta gotta just try it, people. It absolutely is the greatest thing that you'll ever find. Can't recommend it highly enough. Hmm. You, you talk. You mentioned recovery. Let's talk about that because, gosh, your, your, your training week sounds uh, sounds intense. Uh, how do how do you recover from from all that training? And imagine you have a, a work life and family life as well. Yeah, I mean, I've got three kids. I own a business. I got, you know, a number of employees. I've got a lot of responsibility. It's a lot of things to balance. And, and uh, a lot of people think that, you know, exercise is recreation. Well, when I'm exercising, I'm always thinking about just about everything. I don't zone out. I zone in. I think about my diet. I think about my day. So mental clarity on this diet is just another topic to talk about. And because I, I recover so fast, I get to exercise more and I get to think more and I, everything in my life has improved because I'm, I'm focused when I'm out there. I'm, I'm paying attention to my life. Uh, and, and, and the recovery on this diet is just, I mean, it's, it's just, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. You're, you, this has come from a guy who's just probably like most of the other people listening to this audio recording. You know, you, you exercise a lot. You're real passionate about it. You want to learn more. It's one of the greatest things involved in, you know, in your life. And, and, and you, 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 pride yourself on your diet or on your, your training or on your supplement cocktails and you really think that you've got it dialed in. Um, <laughs> I think that way too. Now, I recover so fast. It's like I, I feel like I was a total idiot before and I pinch myself now because I can't believe how fast I recover. It's just, it's amazing. I, I go for a run and I come home, I'll have like three, four glasses of fresh squeezed Valencia orange juice and in like uh, 20 minutes later, I, I can just go do the run again. Yeah, and it sounds crazy. It really does. My body weight is, is, is very low. My body composition is very low. So when I run, I'm not putting undue stress on my muscles. That's number one. Number two, I, I, I'm getting my body so clean. I sleep well. Um, there's nothing in my body that's, that's slowing down. When you just eat, you know how long it takes to digest orange juice? It takes 30 seconds to digest orange juice. If you eat a protein shake. It's going to take hours to digest that food. If you eat pasta, it's going to take 12 hours to get that food out of you. Your body's working hard to get that stuff out of you. If you eat garlic or, you know, let's say things that aren't, that you can't eat as a meal, your body's trying to get rid of it as soon as you put it in your body. You eat garlic, you smell like garlic instantly. Your body's trying to get rid of it. You eat a lot of salt, you sweat salt against your eyes, your body's trying to get rid of the salt. It doesn't want the salt. Um, when you just eat fruits and vegetables, your body becomes so efficient, so pure, that you recover instantly. Instead of my body working and spending so much time digesting food in my stomach, it's going to the cells in my legs and fixing, you know, the, the capillaries or whatever in my muscles that need to be, you know, improved or fixed on. It, it's not wasting time digesting food. So recovery is just incredible. You have to sleep. I mean, it's not just what you eat. You've got to sleep. You've got You've got to eat the right foods. You know, you've got to you got to train properly. Like I said, I, don't, I run I can run 31 miles a day for five days in a row, and I'm still good. But I'll run 15 miles in the morning and 16 miles at night, and, and I'll and I'll take it easy, to, you know, during the middle of the day. So there's always a balance. Um, but I do feel like I am wearing a red cape uh, most of the time. It's pretty. It's just un. Um, final thoughts on. Let's say somebody wants to start. Um to try being uh, a raw vegan, uh, a low-fat raw vegan diet. What uh, resources do you recommend? How do you recommend they get started? Uh, you know, it's important that you have support. You know, a lot of, most people that try to eat this way are going to be questioning them to themselves daily, if not hourly, if this is the right thing to do. 
And you need to get around people who have been doing this for a long time, who, where you can say, look, this guy or this girl's doing it. They've been doing it. They're really successful at it. You know, they're talking with from experience. I've got to keep the faith. Don't give up. Don't wuss out. Keep it up. Uh, so the way the way you find that out is you got to check out uh, some websites, uh, whether it's the social communities. Is uh, of course of course is before you do that you got to you got to get the information uh, from a book. So you have to read the book Eighty Ten Ten by Dr. Douglas Graham. Uh, read it twice. Read it three times. Uh, check out. Uh, 30 bananas a day dot com. That's uh, the number 30, and bananas all spelled out a day dot com. That's a great website. There's thousands of people on that website that are eating or trying to eat this way. There's a, a website called raw natural hygiene dot com. That's very similar to 30 bananas a day. Uh, these are these are very good resources. Um, and uh, this you, you might be surprised. It might be some people that live very close to you that are eating this way or trying to eat this way. Um, with the internet, communication and education is moving real fast, and I believe that this diet is going to become much more popular uh, as more and more people give it a try and start showing all the naysayers that, hey, this is, doesn't, this is not just an option. This is the option. This is the best way to eat. Uh, and, you know, all the people that talk about, oh, well, you're, you're going to have problems if you don't eat nuts and seeds, or, you know, you've got to have you know, your, your oil and blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't know. I don't have all that stuff and I'm doing great. And they say, oh, well, in five years, you're going to have problems. Well, these guys have been doing this for a long or five years and they still have problems. So, you know, Dr. Graham's been doing this for almost 30 years. Uh, there's people, there's some people in Australia that have been doing this or South America for more than, you know, that, that for I think 40 years. Or it's, it's, Look at animals. They don't, have, they don't have their, you know, their essential oils and, they don't. They don't need all this crap. You don't need it. It's just all a bunch of marketing lies. So, fruits and vegetables every time. That's where it's at. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks for taking the time out of your schedule to to talk with me, Michael. Yeah, I'm happy to uh, share my experience. I'm I'm really pumped about this diet. That's uh, pretty obvious. But uh, I really want to get the message out. Uh, I I feel extremely extremely blessed and lucky that. I um, I was able to just kind of stumble upon this diet, and 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 I should say that when I first saw this book, and I skimmed through it, and I felt I was um, felt like you know an elitist in the world of diets. I just kind of brushed it off. I didn't even want to open the book. My wife recommended that I look at this book. She found it. She said, you know, you should really take a look at this. It looks like some really good some really good points in this book. Um, I laughed out loud when I read some of the. Um, recipe options that were listed in this book because it was, you know, take uh, bananas, cut them up, put it in a bowl, take some strawberries, cut them up, put it in a bowl, enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> and the guy's serious. Like, you know, that's the meal. And, and, uh, and I really thought it was outrageous. I thought it was impossible. And I really started to think about it. I said, you know what, maybe this would be, you know, this is an eccentric way uh, that I could try to eat for a week and just see what happens. And, and, and the more I read this book and the more I actually saw, hey, this is not some kind of joke. This is, this is really, really, this really makes sense. I'm going to try this. And the rest is history. I mean, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. I'm pretty, pretty sure about that.